What's good YouTube? Welcome to the optimal drill placement test for large grid ships. So what I've done here is I've built a structure to test different drill spacings. Starting with no spacings, going to one space, two spaces, and three spaces in between drills. We're going to see which one actually holds up to be the best number of spaces in between large grid drills. We're using the same number of drills for each platform. And I've tried to keep the building of them as uniform as possible. That way we don't have any outside variables to worry about. I've also chosen to do this on an ice lake because that's going to be our best bet to get a nice flat area to work with. Since we're running the same amount of drills and all of that, we're not going to worry about how much we grab because that should be the same for all of the drills in the test. I wanted to go ahead and do this one. I've been planning on do, doing this video for a while. I just haven't gotten around to it. And I decided to go ahead and do it because we're about to build in one of my series that I'm doing at the moment, the Beginner's Guide series that I'm running. We're about to actually build our first drilling platform. And I figure knowing all of this for that series would be a very, very good idea. That way I can actually use the optimal drill setup in the series to teach the beginners. If you want to see that series, go ahead and click the link up in the upper right hand corner of your screen now. In that series, I am actually teaching everyone everything that I know about space engineers as it comes up. So that series may not only be good for beginners, it could be good for season players as well just in case I know something that you don't you may learn something from it because like I said I'll be covering everything that I know we've already done a drill test for small grid ships so if you want to see that go ahead and click the annotation as well here while working on this video it actually opened up a few more questions for me so I will be continuing this line of thought with our testing over the next couple of videos for this playlist since we're figuring out in this video what the optimal drill distance is we still need to know what the optimal drill speed is so I'll be shooting a video over the next day or two to add to this series okay so now that I've gotten all of the stuff built I need to go ahead and group all of our drills together so we can cut them on and off as necessary and we need to group all of our pistons together too so we can control those so we found that the optimal drill distance for small grid ships were actually not completely what you'd think. It was from side to side on the drills, it was three. And then from uh, the other side, it was two. So you, would, you could fit three spots in between and then two in between on the, another direction. It's kind of confusing to try to explain. So if you want to see that, like I said, make sure you go check out the other video there. This one is slightly off from the rest of them, but I'm not too worried. The distance should be about the same. Yeah, nothing's going to really change there. It's just we had that one taller, so that'll be fine. The distances will be the same. But basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to drill down with each of these platforms, and we're going to see which one actually drills the best. I'm certain this is going to drill the best because I mean we all know that side by side drills are the way to go right and this is probably not I'm not really sure this might make it through it might not but we're going to find all of that out to be on the safe side and there's also another set of drills that I'll probably be running as well but that'll be later in the video. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run these and we're gonna do a quick time lapse. Let me get my little secondary camera here set up. We're gonna do a quick time lapse and we're gonna shoot it from two different angles so you can see it. But we're gonna see which one of these platforms drill the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my bar here to for the groups to where we can cut the drills on and off and then we can reverse the pistons as well. Now, I need to set the piston speeds up. We're gonna go nice and slow for the pistons because we don't want it, any of that to matter. Uh, we're not really sure what the maximum velocity for drilling is, which is going to be the next video. So we'll figure all of that out later. So I know 0.2 is safe. How many 
pistons. To, or we're running three pistons each, so that's going to be a 0 .066 repeating value for the three pistons. So basically, you'll divide your point two divided by three, and that's going to give you 0 .066. So if we set all of them to the same speed here, then let's reverse. I almost messed up there. Then all we have to do is cut the drill zone and then hit reverse and we'll go on and drill down. So let's go ahead and do that and see which one of these setups are better. Now isn't this interesting? It seems like the only one that actually worked was the side-by-side -side drills. We knew this would work. We weren't sure if it was the only one that was going to work though. So it is. Apparently, if you're going to do a grid system, that is the best way to go is side-by-side. -side. There is something we do know though. We do know that it is possible to use a rotating arm setup. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to pull in my drilling arm platform that I have here in my blueprints that I've created already. So I'm going to go ahead and drop one here. We're going to copy and paste this setup over here. So let me go ahead and paste another one. Now, the goal of this entire series that we're doing here is just to kind of science things out and find out what the best setups are in space engineers so what I'm doing here is I'm just trying all the different ways that we can do this and figuring out which one's going to be the best way to do it now in the next episode of this series we are actually going to now in the next episode of this series we're actually going to basically figure out what the best timing for drilling is that way we can basically come up with a fully optimized drill platform. Okay, basically these are all set up the same here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna set these drills up into a group. That way nothing's changed here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a quick time lapse of this one here working. This is actually way more optimal than these over here and this one actually works. So what this is doing is it will basically spin around one entire rotation then drop down spin around one entire rotation so this costs a lot less materials than say this one if you notice there's a lot less drills right now that being said the way we have this set up is I have timer blocks set up for each of these I, I need to give you a quick overview of how we've got this set up I have a timer block set up so three different timer blocks and each one of them has, does a specific thing. Our pistons are on a group as well as our drills being on a group. So what we do is the first timer block, this is the one we start with. It's got no delay whatsoever because it's just the starter block. If you set up actions here, we will, we've got a rotor on here that basically we cut the rotor lock off and then we hit timer block two. Now timer block two, has a five minute delay because it's got to wait for an entire rotation and this is set up for I believe a 0 0.02 rotation or 0 0.2 rotations per minute or something like that let me look this is set up for 0 0.2 rotations per minute so it's going to take an entire five minutes to make an entire uh, a full rotation I know this isn't the optimal speed that's why we're going to do the next video um, and 
So this has got a five minute delay, so it'll spin around for five minutes, make an entire rotation, and then it'll hit timer block three, which simply turns the pistons on, or the, it'll turn the pistons on, and the pistons will move forward at 0.2 meters per second for long enough to go about a half a block down, and then they'll cut back off and start group one or timer block one again. So once I start this timer block here, it'll start spinning and it should go all the way through, all the way down. I'm gonna do a quick time lapse of that entire process and then we're gonna test the other one as well. Okay, so let's see what we got going on here. The side-by-side -side ones right here without anything in between them make a really, really clean cut. So if you're looking for a clean cut, I would recommend using this setup instead of the one in between. While this does work, it's a very, very rugged cut and could run into issues after extended use, but I doubt it. It'll probably run just the same way that it was. However, it's not very clean, so if you actually care about the way it looks, then I would recommend using side-by-side -side over there. But if you don't really care about the way it looks and you're just after the materials for the cheapest setup possible, this will be your best bet right here. So now that we know which setup is best, we need to figure out how fast we can drill. So the next episode of this series will be to figure out exactly that, just how fast we can effectively drill without slowing ourselves down. That'll help us make the most efficient drilling platform possible. And the video after that, I'm going to go ahead and say is going to be taking everything that we've learned throughout the three videos that we'll have done at that point and using all of that information to design the perfect base drilling platform. 
Thank you for watching the video all the way through. How about dropping a like to let me know that you did. If you haven't already, please help us reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, click one of the two videos on your screen now. Thank you. Have a nice day.